So 702 requires a warrant already for the actual collection, all right? And it's, it's a generalized warrant. Okay. It's not a specific right. warrant. You go through the court. To, to, to review the bidding, all right? Um, 702 is a reflection of the telecommunications reality that there are a whole bunch of communication. We're talking about digital communication. Right. We're talking about 702 digital. allows the NSA to force Google and Facebook and right. other companies right. to provide information about their customers. About specific accounts. Right. Sure. All right. And and in the upstream portion of it, actually allows NSA to collect it. Right. Elect to, true electronic surveillance. So you've got. So let's move You can forward. get it at rest. You can get it at motion. Both authorized by revision mm -hmm. of the FISA Act, Section 702. Are the rules too broad, though? Do they allow the FBI or other agencies so to me, access yeah. it? So, so NSA is allowed to either collect or ask, mm -hmm. passive or active, endpoint or in right. transit, on legitimate intelligence targets that they have reason to believe are not U.S. persons and are outside the United States. That's vanilla. That's what NSA does all the time, all right? And then, then it collects all that stuff. That, that's good. Sure. It, it, it is based on the reality that not all the emails in America are of America, that not all the emails transiting America are of Americans. And we take advantage of what are realities with regard to global comms pass. Now, what you're asking is different. Sure, uh, you're, exactly. You're, okay? You're not challenging the collection. Right. You are asking about what then happens after the collection. And what happens now is that agencies beyond NSA are allowed to query, listen to my words carefully because it, it really matters, are allowed to query what is unarguably legitimately collected foreign intelligence, this big stack of stuff, to query that stack with what we call selectors that are of U.S. persons. Right. All right? And that, that is a no fooling legitimate issue. That is a no fooling legitimate discussion that we should have. The 702 program is one of those powerful collection programs keeping you safe in NSA history. For God's sake, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Sure. But, but, you, but you, I get it. Who what? did you allow to query? And what are the selectors? Can you use U.S. identities? I'm sorry, it's a long answer, Matt, but let me No, it's, it's fine, completely. There's, there is a prohibition in NSA against reverse targeting. So, if, for example, I mean, this actually happened during my time there. We got a very bad man we can't find. He's living in the Middle East. All right? We know he calls his mom every Sunday. I'm getting a little illustrative now on you here, right? He calls his mom, who lives in Jordan, but who's a green card holder, who's now a U.S. person. Sure. All right? That Jordanian American green card holder living in Jordan is now protected by the Fourth Amendment. As a practical matter, one way of tracking the sun, since you know that the sun calls mama every Sunday, is to target mama's phone number. That's prohibited. That's illegal. It's called reverse targeting. You're going after the protected entity. You're, you're trying to capture the communication of the foreign enemy by going through the protected entity. What you just asked me about in 702 is not that. Right. But I get the concern. It